Hello everyone. I am so happy to see you again. Today we are going to make a cozy and delicious dinner that I think is perfect for an autumn evening. Here's the menu. I'm serving a bright and comforting carrot, ginger, orange soup for the first course, a tray bake with delicata squash, apples, and sausage for the main course, and a proudly puffed pumpkin souffle for the grand finale. All of the recipes will be linked in the description box below. For the carrot ginger orange soup, we need carrots, about two and a half pounds of them. And I've already peeled my carrots, so all I need to do is trim them and roughly chop them. This soup is so delicious that I included it in my 2017 cookbook, Kevin's Kitchen. A lot of people have asked where they can order the book. And right now, if you go to my website, kevinleejacobs.com, you can find it in the sidebar. We will also need a large onion. I'm using a white onion here. You could use a yellow onion. You can make this soup days ahead of time. You can even make it months ahead of time because it freezes perfectly well. And that's really all the prep work I need to do for this soup right now. So let's head over to the stovetop. In my Dutch oven over medium heat, I'm adding about a tablespoon of butter and a tablespoon of oil. This is avocado oil. You could use olive oil here. When the butter melts, add the onion. Stir. And then lower the heat, cover the pot, and let the onions sweat until they are tender. That will take about eight minutes. When the onions are perfectly tender, add two cloves of chopped garlic. I'm going to use one of the garlic pucks that you and I made together yesterday. This is from fresh homegrown garlic. Also add the carrots. Six cups of chicken stock. And one teaspoon of salt. Increase the heat, and when the mixture comes to a boil, cover the pot and let this cook until the carrots are perfectly tender. That will take about 30 minutes. When the carrots are perfectly tender, we can add the zest and juice of one orange. This is a very aromatic soup. Now, normally I add one tablespoon of grated fresh ginger, but I don't have any fresh ginger today. So I'm going to use one teaspoon of organic ground ginger. And then we need to puree the soup. Now, you could use an immersion blender like this. I prefer to use my regular blender because I don't want any stuck on bits from the pot to interfere with the smooth quality of the soup. did not all fit in the blender, so I'm going to transfer some of the 
puree to another cup, and then we can do the rest. Rinse out my pot, then we can return the soup right back to the pot. I always add a splash of heavy cream to this soup. This is anywhere from a quarter cup to a half cup. Let's have a taste test. Oh, the soup makes me smile. It's like sunshine on a cold day. For a delightful first course, I like to serve the soup alongside a sliced baguette. I garnish the soup with a dollop of creme fraiche and a sprinkling of fresh chopped parsley. And the soup does not need any additional salt or anything else. Now I'm going to let this cool to room temperature and then I will cover the pot and pop this into the refrigerator. And then we have to make a quick trip to the local farm store. I need to buy some delicata squash for the main course. At the last minute, I decided to visit the local flower shop. I want to buy a few snapdragons and maybe a dahlia to replace the flowers that have wilted in the arrangement that you and I made together last week. home again. So I bought a baguette at the berry farm that will go with our soup and a couple of beautiful delicata squash. Heavy cream because I put heavy cream in my coffee. And then I have some flowers that I'm going to use to refresh some of the wilted flowers in the arrangement that you and I made together, what, two weeks ago? And here's that arrangement. So everything has held up really well except for the white snapdragons. So I'm going to remove them. And here's a purple snapdragon that has seen better days. I'm also going to remove these burgundy dahlias. I'm always amazed at how long a floral arrangement can last in a vase. Look at this dahlia. Just beautiful. Snappies. fully refreshed flower arrangement. I'm 
going to clean this up and then we can get started on the main course. This sheet pan dinner with delicata squash and apple and sausage. The first thing we need is the delicata squash, which we just purchased at the berry farm. You should be able to find delicata squash at just about any supermarket. It's generally available from mid-September through November. And the nice thing about delicata squash, it has a delicate skin which you can eat. You do not have to peel the squash. You can save the seeds from the delicata squash and plant them in spring. I did that one year. It was great to have delicata squash available by mid-September. And I'm just cutting these into, oh, one-third inch rounds. I said rounds. I actually meant demi-loons. I need a baking tray. Add the delicata squash. And I'm putting the squash at one end of the baking tray. Then we need a red onion. I will slice this into, I think the word I was looking for earlier was half moons. We can add the onion to the delicata squash. Then we need some sage, which I have out in the garden. Follow me. So we need five large sage leaves, or maybe 10 or so medium leaves. I adore the scent of fresh sage. And all we have to do is roughly chop or slice the leaves. I'm tossing the squash mixture with olive oil, salt, and pepper. The oil will help the veggies to caramelize in the oven. I wanted to mention that delicata squash has this wonderful nutty flavor. It's really nothing like butternut or acorn squash. It's uniquely delicious. Then we can add to the tray some sweet Italian sausage. Really, as many as you want. I'm going to add five. These are sort of small links. And then I need to brush each link with olive oil. This will help with the browning in the oven. There are only two of us for dinner tonight, but I am probably making enough food for four, five, or even six people. So we will have lots of delicious leftovers. I'm going to pop this into my preheated 425 degree Fahrenheit or 220 degrees Celsius oven for 15 minutes. Then I will add some diced apple and continue baking for another 15 to 20 minutes or until the sausage is done. You can use any apple you like for this sheet pan dinner. I'm using Fuji apples today, and I just need to slice the apples. Now we can add the apples to the delicata squash, onion, and sage mixture.
and then back into the oven until the sausage is done. That will take from 15 to 20 minutes. We're going to make a sauce to accompany this sheet pan dinner. This is a mustard sauce and it's really easy to do. To make the sauce, I'm mixing Dijon mustard and whole grain mustard in a small bowl. Then we need one or two finely minced cloves of garlic. And here again, I'm going to use one of my garlic pucks. These are frozen. I just need to pop this into the microwave for about 15 seconds. There are no exact proportions to the ingredients in this mustard sauce. I probably use the equivalent of a soup spoon of the Dijon and the whole grain mustard. And now I'm going to add some pepper and some olive oil just to create a pourable sauce. Or maybe I should say a spoonable sauce. I like to spoon the mustard over both the sausage and the apple and delicata squash mixture. You'd be amazed at how delicious the combination is. This dinner smells just incredible. Now I'm going to slice up the sausage and then return it to the sheet pan and then we can dish some up and have a taste. This is how I like to serve this dinner. Then I like to spoon some of the mustard sauce onto the plate. This delicata squash is so tender and again, you do not have to peel it into the sauce. Even the apples get the mustard treatment. And the succulent sausage. This is the perfect main course for an autumn dinner. So I think a pumpkin souffle is the perfect dessert for this autumn dinner. And we need a six cup or 48 ounce souffle dish, preferably straight sided like this one. And we need to butter it really well. There is nothing scary about a souffle. It's just beaten egg whites and some flavorings when you put this in the oven, it puffs up proudly. The egg whites do all of the work. And we can add to the dish two tablespoons or thereabouts of regular granulated sugar. Swirl the dish to coat the bottom and the sides with the sugar. The sugar will give this souffle an amazing crust. Then we can place the souffle dish on a baking sheet and set it aside. For the pumpkin base, I'm putting one 15 ounce can of pure pumpkin puree in a medium bowl. Then I'm adding a half teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, a half teaspoon of ground ginger, and a quarter teaspoon of ground cloves and we just mix these ingredients together. Now my oven is preheating, or actually it's already preheated to 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 degrees Celsius. Then we need to deal with the egg whites. I'm going to beat mine in my stand mixer. And I do want to wipe down 
my bowl with a little white vinegar. The white vinegar will remove any grease that might be in the bowl. If your bowl has any bit of grease or oil in it, then the eggs won't mount properly. We need to separate five large eggs. I'm going to put the yolks in this bowl and the whites in my mixing bowl. So a better plan is to put the whites in a little bowl. This way, if you happen to break a yolk while you're separating the eggs, you won't lose all of your whites. If there's any yolk mixed in with the whites, the whites won't mount properly. You can and should freeze the yolks. I'm going to start whipping these egg whites and when they begin to foam, I will add a quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar. That's to, to stabilize the whites and one tablespoon of cornstarch. We are going to beat the egg whites to soft peaks. So we have achieved the soft peak stage. So now we are going to continue beating while gradually adding one cup of regular granulated sugar. Now, if you have super fine sugar, which works just great for this recipe, go ahead and use one and a third cups. Beat the whites to stiff peaks. Let's have a look. Yes, we are at the stiff peak stage. Now we can add a generous cup of the beaten whites to the pumpkin mixture just to lighten the pumpkin mixture. We just fold the whites in. Then we can add this pumpkin mixture directly to the whites. Oh, this smells just wonderful. Now, we want to fold the pumpkin mixture into the whites. And the goal here is to deflate the whites as little as possible. And then we can scoop this glorious mixture into our prepared souffle dish. I'm going to pop this into the preheated oven and then I will immediately lower the oven temperature to 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 degrees Celsius and we will let this bake until it puffs. That will take about 55 minutes. I decided to put our souffle on a small baking tray. I need the large baking tray for a different project. I like to serve this souffle with nothing more than a snow shower of confectioner sugar. Well, we've already tasted the soup. We've already tasted the main course. Let's taste the dessert. This is absolutely scrumptious. I love the crispy meringue sides and top. We have the wonderful flavor from the pumpkin and we have the warmth from the cinnamon and ginger and clove spices. This is really incredible. For such an elegant dinner, all three courses were truly easy to make. And I hope you will try this dinner someday. Again, 
I will put all of the recipes in the description below. In the comments below, let me know if you enjoy these easy, elegant dinners. And I can put a couple of my other videos at the end of this one that you can enjoy between now and my next upload. Until then, please take very good care of yourself, and I will see you in the next episode, which I think will be on Friday. Bye, friends.